All right, in today's video, we're just gonna see if there really is any CCD sensor magic going on, or is it just the glass that you buy for an in-mount camera? Because I've used two in-mount cameras so far, the Epson RD1, which is one of my personal favorite cameras to use, and the full-frame Leica M9. This is one of the things that's scoured the internet for a long time and personally i do think you get different colors straight out of camera and stuff like that but like i edit all of my photos so is it really making a difference and if so where and yeah we're just gonna put this to the test all right the two cameras i'm gonna be shooting on are obviously the leica m9 with a full frame ccd sensor at 18 megapixels but the other camera I really want to kind of put to the test to kind of match up is the a7R5. I really enjoy this camera, especially the autofocus on this camera is absolutely insane. But I want to know if it's the sensor that has the magic or is it the glass that you're putting in front of it? Because most of the in-mount glass that you tend to find and buy, they have like characteristics and a lot more uniqueness to them than your autofocus lenses. Not saying any autofocus lenses are bad, like I have a few of my favorites, like the Sigma 1.2 35mm that we're shooting on right now. I absolutely love this lens, but it's just so clinically perfect that when I wanna go shoot around for like either hobbyist things or family stuff, I don't wanna lug this thing around, A, because it's huge and it's heavy and second of all it's just so like clinically like perfect i don't know maybe that's just me it pulls like any kind of nostalgia out of a photo out but portrait wise and work wise like this lens is like utter perfection but so far every in-mount lens that i've seen or used just has some sort of character that either falls along the edges or has a funky kind of flare or reduces like contrast. There's some sort of characteristic that is going on in those lenses that seem to reflect onto the sensor of like a Leica M11 or anything like that. So let's see if it's the glass or the sensor. When it comes to just like usage of these cameras, I know this doesn't necessarily rel relate to like a CCD or CMOS sensor. Um, but when it comes to taking these out and using them, you fly much more under the radar with a camera like this. Um, the focusing is a little more challenging. It's a little trickier to nail focus. Um, it's a lot slower. So you have to think about those things, but when it comes to taking photos of either people or bringing this camera in places that you probably won't normally get away with something like this, People just don't bat an eye at this. They look at it, they see it, they go, oh, it's an old camera. He's probably shooting film for fun, nostalgia, and that's it. No one says anything like, oh, you can't take photos in here, or hey, you can't bring that in here. This, on the other hand, everyone knows what this is. It looks the same. It looks way too professional. So when it comes to bringing this around in places, you'll get flagged down 10 times faster and like, hey, like you can't bring that in here, no professional cameras, and little do they know, like, yeah. So obviously that doesn't have to do with the sensor, but just saying. All right, before we get into the pictures, um, we'll just run through the lens real quick. This is the Voigtlander 40 millimeter 1.4 um, Nocton. It's the classic one. There are two versions of this lens that I'm aware of. There is the single coated version and the multi coated version. This is the multi coated, which has a little less character than the single. The single will just flare. You can get some funky colors out of it. It's filled with all sorts of things that can happen and go on with the lens. This is the more tamed version. So keep that in mind as we look through these images. At 1.4, it's not the sharpest lens, it still resolves enough to get like a good portrait and bokeh and whatnot. But just know that this lens is typically not really useful at f1.4. 
F2, most of these images are shot at. And then I did shoot a 2.8 and an F4 just so we can eliminate whatever the lens might be doing and like just look straight up at the quality of the sensor more so and what's being resolved. So that's all the clarity on the lens. Um, this is also like the one of the most affordable like in-mount lenses. Uh, I think I picked mine up for like 280. You can find these fairly cheap for an in-mount lens. Let's clarify, for an in-mount lens, it's really affordable. So just keep that in mind as we're looking at these images. It is not the most clinical, but I want to see if that's what's creating the magic that's happening in my photos or if it's the sensor. Let's dive in. Alrighty now, so I'm gonna slide off to the side. We finally got this all set up and we're just gonna be looking, this is my first time looking at them. Along with you, I have not peeped ahead or anything like that, so crumble cookies have to go to the side right now. But let's see what's going on here. Um, these first images are the M9. Um, the nice thing I will say about the M9 is while you're like just focusing and dialing in your exposure, even though it's all manual and it's not reading the lens like electronically, it can tell you exactly what f-stop you're at due to the other settings. So that's like really cool. You'll always know the aperture that you're shooting at. But anyways, that's enough about the M9. So we have the M9 on the right. Here's the Sony. Obviously it's rendered a lot brighter. So that's very typical of CCD sensors, they usually underexpose. Um, I did change to manual exposure later. This was an aperture priority right out the gate, just to kind of start shooting. So let's just bring the exposure up on this. And you can see it's definitely more on the green side, so, and colder side. So let's see, what are the settings on this guy? 6,310. So we're gonna match this. Just so there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There we go, temperature is matched the same. The only difference right now is the exposure. So we'll bring that. Obviously that looks the closest, so we'll go there. All right, now this is it. literally as close as it'll get. So with yellows, they seem to be a little bit, they're pretty darn close, but they definitely have a little more green in the photos. From what I can see with my eyes on my monitor, it just looks a little more green, a little bit cooler. But other than that, that's really it, which if you wanted to, you could just probably add a punch of magenta in there. Like, wow, just one up and it gets pretty freaking close. So like that is pretty, honestly, you, you post this online, you probably won't see a difference. That hurts because this guy is freaking 2,500 bucks for the body only. All right, let's move on to some other photos. This has got quite a bit of color in it. So we'll slap the Sony on this side. And right out the gate, again, it's rendered colder. Um, the white balance, I believe, is still the same on the Sony. Yeah. So let me white balance it, and then we'll see what happens. So, so that's one thing I have noticed on the Leica M9 is it does tend to white balance cold. It is very cold. Why? I don't know. But it's always cold. So I usually have to warm that up quite a bit. All right, now that white balance is matched, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's, <laughs> gosh, it's pretty difficult. The lens corrections and all of that is off. There is no preset on this. This is literally the raw. That hurts 
because there is quite a few colors going on in here and they're looking pretty freaking close. Now, I will say the reds are a little bit more punchy, a lot punchier than I thought. They have a vibrance to them. So if you like your reds to kind of pop a little bit, so far, that's the only magic I see in the CCD right now. The greens, yeah, the greens look pretty much the same, maybe a little bit matte on this side, but you can pump up vibrance and problem is fixed. Wow, I really thought these were gonna be a lot. <laughs> Dang it, I wanted these to be pretty different. Let's see, let's see about this now. Um, all right, so, goodness. Okay, here, the greens look a little bit bluer, but again, the white balance, so let me white balance it real quick. 6,300, and then down to 10. And then probably Bring the exposure up a little bit. Okay, now, all right. Ha <laughs> ha, I knew there would be a difference. Okay, in this one scenario, <laughs> this definitely has more magenta and this definitely leans more green, which is probably what people see um, the, the CCD being a little more like film-ish. Like, because most film has like a green base layer. Um, there's definitely way more green in the shadows here is yeah it recovers the sky pretty decently <laughs> but yeah that's totally dang well there's your difference if you are really hunting to find an excuse for a ccd um you have green undertones for sure all right so this has the i found a neighbor throwing out a crap ton of trash. So let's throw these up here real quick. These, This will be the last comparison because this has the most diverse color in it. And all right, so, so this is the last comparison as I match the white balance. This had the most color. It was shot, the lighting was the same. I shot it at the same two-ish aperture so it doesn't get more spot on than this so apparently missed a little bit of focus <laughs> on the uh, sony but all right here we go color wise all right color wise it's, yeah, it's definitely cooler with a green cast. So, I mean, there's not much more to look at besides like the other photos I took, but color wise, I think we have our, uh, what do you call it? I think we have our answer. CCD is different, but in my personal opinion, I know this is subjective. This is just from what I'm seeing and what I captured using the same exact lens. There is a little bit of magic, if you will. Reds seem to have a bit more punch, and the, from what I can tell, the shadows have like a green cast, more like film. I know these sensors were modeled more so after Kodachrome, so there's that. Um, but yeah, if you're really just kind of wanting to shoot JPEG and just get color photos straight out of the camera, this is probably what you're looking for. A CCD, this is kind of where the magic sauce is, is punchy reds and green cast in the shadows. If you're correcting that, which my preset kind of does, it, it becomes pointless. So I think for now, as much as I love using this guy, he is very fun to bring around. I think I'm just gonna adapt it to the A7R5 for now and just shoot with that yeah um thanks for coming on this uh journey with me i know it wasn't like super scientific or anything like that i hope this actually shows through a little bit more 
on YouTube. I know there's compression and stuff like that, but uh, you can like and subscribe. I post a lot of these kind of photos, like what what you saw. Well, not what you saw. Those were just for colors and stuff, but more photos and stuff like that on threads and Instagram. So if you could swing by, give me a follow. Also like and share here um, and subscribe. See you on the next one. Peace.